Well, hello there. You're listening to the Sort Yourself Out podcast. Today, I'm joined by Deepa Liu, and we're going to be discussing spirit guides and how connecting with our spirit guides can help us to sort ourselves out. I'm your host, Janine Hunt, natural health therapist for over 30 years, hypnotherapist, lifelong learner, and student of the ageless wisdom. Here on the Sort Yourself Out podcast and in my Better Than Happy Zone membership, I teach powerful top-down techniques and practices so that you can master your mind and emotions, free yourself of what's holding you back, expand your consciousness, and nourish your soul. So let's get started. Well, hello there, and thank you so much for joining me today. Today, I'm talking to Deepa Liu, who is going to be discussing spirit guides and how connecting with our spirit guides can help us to sort ourselves out. Deepa is a sacred artist, spiritual success coach, interfaith minister, and co-founder of Magnify Your Miracles membership. She works with spiritual seekers, healers, creatives, highly sensitive people, and heart-based entrepreneurs to feel the divine presence, develop their intuition, connect with their spirit guides, and find and fulfill their purpose. Nice. I cannot wait to hear more. So let's jump right into my conversation with Deepa. Hi, Deepa. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Well, I'm really looking forward to our talk today. First, I'd I'd love for you to tell us a little bit about yourself and how you became a sacred artist and how you started working with people's spirit guides. Yeah, well, I mean, it started with my, you know, wife just recommending I take a, you know, art class and I started taking art class, loved it. And I thought, oh, you know, I want to create art that feels like it blesses people. You know, and I'd been on the spiritual path for many years by that point. And so I was like, oh, you know, I want to create sacred art. I want to create sacred art where when people see it, they feel blessed. And so my first piece of art I did was Yogananda. And I don't know if, if your listeners know who he is, but Yogananda is a, you know, a Swami, a guru that came from India to help bring East and West together, like the spiritual paths. And there, he has disciples and followers. And I wanted to paint him where people, when they saw his painting, this painting would feel blessed by him. And it was, But I kept it a secret. It was just, you know, like just for me. And I... I started painting them and I finished them up. And um, this woman who I did not know came up to me and said, are you the one who painted Yogananda? Because I was checking it to see, you know, is he dry? And I said, oh, yes, I am, you know. And she said, oh, well, I just have to tell you, when I see his painting, this image you created, she goes, I feel blessed by him. I feel like his power and vibration that, that, you know, that he has. And I'm a disciple of his. And on the outside, I was like, Oh, thank you. But on the inside, oh my God, oh my God, it worked, it worked. You know, and that was the beginning of it, of me becoming this sacred artist where I just started to create paintings where I, they were blessings, they were portals. So I call them portals because, and those are doorways to divine presence. doesn't matter what path you're on. I honor all paths. I'm an interfaith minister. But I really wanted to create this in the world because everything is energy. And I wanted to, you know, to help uplift the vibration uh, on people's homes and their lives um, and, you know, kind of help them do that. So that's kind of how I got into sacred art. I've been on the spiritual path for many years. And through doing the sacred art, my spirit guides started to come to me because I didn't even know if I believed in them when I, you know, when I was like a kid and in my twenties, cause I grew up in a family that wasn't spiritual at all, but they started coming to me in my meditations. Like I'd get these visions and I was someone who was not visual before. And then I realized, Oh, these spirit guys want me to paint them. And so I started painting them with the intention and blessing that they wanted me to mm-hmm. uh, give to people. Cause they really wanted me to help people to like step into, you know, their purpose and expand into their expansion energy of like, what's that next thing they're here to do on the planet. Nice. And listeners cannot see what I'm seeing. Uh, Deepa and I are talking on a video and I can see her paintings in the background and I can see Yogananda there. And it honestly looks like a picture of them. It is so beautiful and perfect. And you wouldn't really know the difference from a photograph. 
I'm sure up close, perhaps you, you know, you might see brush strokes and things like that, but it's just amazing. You're very talented. Was that the first painting you did? It's the first painting of a person. I, yeah. you know, like when I took the classes, the teacher as you're doing things like oranges and apples, you know, just to yeah. learn concepts. Um, but then when I got the concepts down, I was like, yeah, I want to paint a person and I want to paint Yogananda. So he, yeah. he was my first person. Yeah, that's an amazing picture. And I love Yogananda too. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, amazing teachings. So I know that you have had a look at the kind of stuff that I talk about a lot. And also my own situation where I got to a point in my life when I had quit drinking and I thought that that was going to be solving all of my problems. And really, it just opened up a, a whole load of other stuff that I needed to deal with. And I got to this place in my life where I thought, there's got to be more to life than this. And I know that you have some information or you'd like to talk about this a little bit. So what do you think causes us to get to that place where there's got to be more to life than this. Yeah, you know, it really is the subconscious programming we get when we were a kid. You know, we're, we're all given this programming before the age of seven when you can't, you know, you don't have the ability to say, no, I don't want this or no, I don't believe this, you know, and it just whatever you experienced, you know, heard, overheard, saw, you know, came in and gave you programming to what you believe is being responsible what you believe is like what you should do, you know, how everybody has this list of shoulds, you know, like you get these beliefs around, oh, this is what you should do to be a good person or to be a responsible person, you know, and then also your beliefs around like money, you know, like pe most people are raised with the idea that money is like you only can do the responsible thing and what you can afford. Now, I'm not telling people they should go out and, and spend money they don't have. But when you only think in the concept of what you can afford, then you don't ever get your true heart's desire. So what creates people getting to that place of where like, is this all that's in life? Is that you've done a lot of things by your shoulds, have tos, being responsible and what you can afford rather than what's true in your heart. Because what's true in your heart is like what your spirit in whatever higher power you call, whether it's God, Buddha, spirit, you know, the universe, whatever you call that higher power, that's trying to lead you to the expansive place in your life and, and stepping into your purpose. So if you're in that place of, is this it? It means you're not on purpose. And yeah. that's what's going on is you, you're, you're letting your subconscious programming be the driver in the car. And it's not supposed to be driver in the car is supposed to be your super conscious mind, your true heart's desire. That's supposed to be the, the, you know, the driver. Yeah. And we're, we are so programmed into living a safe life and to chasing the money all the time and getting a good job that's going to be secure. And these are all overlays, aren't they? Onto, onto what we're really here to do. But society and our parents, you know, they want us, it's understandable. They want us to be safe and secure and to, to be able to provide for ourselves and such. But I think that's what happens in so many people's lives when they hit that midlife crisis where they say, what the hell's going on? I've been doing this for 20, 30 years and I'm not happy. This is not satisfying me. I'm not fulfilled. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. That subconscious mind wants you to do, you know, safety, security, sameness. Yeah. You know, and I was fortunate to, I actually had gotten into like, an, I was in, for a while an outside straight commission sales rep and I was making lots of money, but you know, I got to a point where I was just like, what good is making all this money if I have no time to enjoy it? So I actually got to that point a lot earlier than the average person. Cause like you said, most people get there in midlife, you know, when they start to feel like, is this it? I felt that way. And I was a 30, you know, I wasn't yeah. even close to midlife. I was just like, is this it? There's got to be more. Like I make a lot of money, but it's this is good. There's got to be more, you know. And I really felt that way. Like there's got to be more than this. Yeah, I know what you mean. And I I was quite fortunate too in that I kind of refused to go down that path in the first place. <laughs> my, uh, my mom wanted me to train as a secretary and have a a nice safe job. She called it something I could fall back on. And the thing was, is I, I didn't really know what I wanted to do at all. I, I had no idea what I wanted to do when I was at school. I was, I was good at languages. And so maybe I thought I'd go do something like, you know, translation or something like that. But I really had no idea. But I just refused 
to go down that route of something to fall back on. <laughs> and there have been times in my life where I thought, oh, I wish I trained as a secretary and had that thing to fall back on. But those have only been <laughs> when I was really low, you know, and, and there's nothing wrong with being a secretary. I don't mean to say that, but it's just, it did not fill me with glee, you know, that sort of idea. And, and weirdly, I had to leave the country and uh, meet my husband when I was about 22 years old before I found the path that I was supposed to be on. And it w- it had not even entered my awareness while I was in Toronto. And this was the path of natural health and um, healing through natural means. And I had no idea that this kind of thing even existed. It had never crossed my path. And I had to really, you know, travel to Europe in order to have this enter my field of awareness in a way. It's really weird. Yeah. I mean, it's funny where life takes us, you know, sometimes you just have to go with that feeling. And, you know, that's the thing about when you get to that place of feeling like, you know, is this it, you know, is that it's really because you're lacking knowing what your purpose is. And what I find is, you know, you see some of those rare people who as kids, they know exactly what it is. And that's because they had parents that actually supported them in it. Yeah. You know, they didn't hear them saying, oh, have a backup plan. You know, like your mom wanted you to have a backup plan. They had parents that saw, oh, this kid has disability. Let's support them in it. You know, and so they like know their purpose because somebody, an adult is helping them, you know, actually foster it. But, you know, and I say this because I want people to don't feel bad if you don't know what your purpose is. You know, that's one of the things I do when I work with clients is help them to get clear with my spirit guides, what your purpose is and how, you know, what's stopping you in your program and how to move forward on it. Because you most likely were programmed to just keep doing the have to's, the shoulds, the responsible thing. And that's why you don't know, because you've never connected with your heart, you know, and I didn't know when I first, I just had the good fortune to get on the spiritual path pretty early and it led me to it. You know, and so I just was like, that's one of the things that's great about when you can find whatever your spiritual path is, is, you know, it can help lead you to that. Yeah. So I am itching to get into the next thing we're going to talk about, which is spirit guides. So I know that you work with people and their spirit guides. So can you tell us what are spirit guides and do we all have them? Yes. Everybody has them. And when I say that, people who get skeptical because they, you know, they go, well, I don't think I have any. And I said, you just aren't open to the communication. You're not aware of their communication because they're communicating with you all the time. It's just a matter of whether you're open and willing to accept it. And how I know that this is when I was young, I wasn't open to it because I grew up in a paradigm, a family where we weren't spiritual. You know, there was no, you know, kind of uh, even religion. There wasn't that, you know. And so, I was like always questioning, like, is there a God? Is there this? Is there that? I don't know, you know? And so I was very much like this with the whole concept of, you know, spirit guides of like, you know, like I'm, you can't see me, but I'm putting my hand up, like, stop, you know, because of the way I was raised and the paradigms and beliefs I had that I didn't think I was a spiritual person or I didn't know if they existed. And I was like, and I also didn't know this until I went to uh, a mediumship group one time. A fr- uh, my my wife wanted me to go and I went just out of curiosity. And th- when I sat down, the guy says to me, he looks me right in the face and he says, you know, when the spirits um, who have passed on show up, they don't look like scary people in the movies. And I grinned because I knew he'd hit the nail on the head that I had some some kind of subconscious fear that I wasn't aware of until he said that that, oh, they might show up looking like, you know, they, how they died or something. And I didn't want that to see that. So everyone has spirit guides. That's the spirit guide of someone who's passed on. I work with spirit guides who are the, the energies that are around you, you know, because everything is energy. Yeah. If you really understudy quantum physics, you get everything's energy. The chair you're sitting on, you know, the walls in your house, your body, it's all energy just vibrating at a different rate, you know. And so the spirit guides are, are energy vibrating at a rate where you can't see them physically, you know. And so people are looking for that physical 
Like I want to see it. Like I see the pen, you know, uh, that I write with or, or the iPad that I, you know, type into or something, but they don't show up that way. At mm-hmm. least not for most people. I don't know anybody where it's shown up in physical form like that. Yeah. Um, mine started to come in visions in my third eye when I started to be really open and started to create these sacred eye portals. Um, and that's, something that that can happen for people. But the big reason why you don't know they're around you is because this is the biggest programming we've all been given. And we've all heard it. I'll believe it when I see it. It's the farthest thing from spiritual truth. You have to believe it, then you'll see it. Yeah. And so if you don't, you know, if you're waiting for, I'm waiting for that thing to come in physical form for, I'm believe it, you're never going to connect with your guides because you're waiting for it to show up in what we believe, like in the physical form and the spirit guide realm is not in that form. So uh, how do you experience a guide yourself? Do you, do you see like a, an image of light or is it a, a humanoid form or what? Can you tell me a little bit about what that appears to you as, or is it a feeling? Yeah. yeah well, for me, they started coming to me in my meditations. And and at first I was like, I wasn't sure what I was supposed to do with them. And then I, I got that I was supposed to start creating them in my sacred portals that to be a blessing on the planet. And so I started doing that. I started creating them. And each of my portals are now this spirit God that's a blessing here for the planet or for somebody, okay, with a specific intention in their blessing. Um, so like the heart chakra angel is all about helping people. If, if you know anything about the chakra system, there's the seven main chakras up the middle of your spine, astral spine, which is in front of your physical spine. And, you know, that's that point in your heart chakra where you get to choose. There's three chakras below and three above. And when you come to that heart part, uh, you go, well, am I going to choose from the higher or I'm going to choose from the lower? Most people choose from the lower. They choose to come from fear, you know, and ego and things like that, rather than from like, what's my spiritual truth? What's the truth of what I'm here on the planet? You know, so... So the spirit guides started to come to me that way. But then they came to me and told me, I want you to put on your website that you can see someone's spirit guide in their energy, that you're going to start to paint their individual spirit guide. So I started to do that because I was given the guidance to do it. was scared. You know, that's the one thing about um, guidance, you know, intuitive guidance is when you get it, you feel calm. But then when you have to go implement it, we get scared because we go into our ego, into our physical self, you know, trying to implement it. And that's what people don't realize is they, you know, when they get scared after they think, oh, that means I shouldn't do it. And I'm like, no, it just means your ego is afraid of, you know, because your subconscious mind is wanting you to be safe, secure, and keep the same thing going on. And so, you know, so that's how I started to be able to see people's spirit guides in their energy field when I do this um, creation of the personal divine presence portal. So, so can you see a spirit guide around me? Does it work on video? <laughs> no, no, that's not how it works. So usually what I do is like we would get together and you would state a, an intention that you're wanting of maybe to overcome a challenge or a purpose you want to create. And then we'll meditate a little bit. I'll have you actually make a statement. This, this is what my guide told me to have people do. So I have you make a statement of that intention of the what spirit guide you want to call in because you have more than one spirit guide around you. Some are here for your lifetime. Some are here just for that purpose or that challenge you're having. Mm -hmm. So when you state what it is, then we meditate a little together together, and then I get a vision in my third eye. And I also get then a message of like what they're here and how they're here to help you. And then I go away and I create it into a, a sacred portal, personal divine presence portal. And then present it to the client when I'm done with, with the message and the blessing. Nice. So yeah. So I don't just see it. Like I'm walking around. I can see everybody's spirit guide. No, it doesn't work that way. Okay. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah. I also have to, I, you know, I'm going to never invade people's privacy. So it's about getting permission because yeah. you know, each person's spirit guides are here for a reason, not just for parlor games, you know, like yes. everybody like, Oh, like on Facebook or something there. Oh, find out who your, you know, your angel guide is or find out who this is. You know, that's not why your spirit guides are here for a parlor game. They're here. Yeah. They really yeah. support you in stepping into your purpose. You know, not feeling like, is this it in life? You know, like if for, to your listeners who are feeling that way, it's about helping you. How do you step into that next step? You know, and how going. do they help us do that? How do they help us to sort ourselves out and move forward in our lives and grow, well, learn and grow? Yeah, it's about, you know, having that connection with them and learning how to, um, how they're communicating with you. 
And then as you start to get the guidance and you start to realize, oh, they're a trusted friend and you start to act on it, you start to trust your intuition because the, every, all the guidance they're giving you is to lead you towards you expanding in your spiritual growth, towards you stepping into your purpose. They're not just, you know, I mean, sometimes they give you something because maybe you need something because you're heading down a path that could be dangerous for you. That can happen too. But but the guides that I'm connecting with are here mostly to help you, you know, navigate how do I actually start to have a really fulfilling purpose-filled, meaningful, you know, life that I love. Because and we're me meant to actually love our lives, not feel like we're suffering in them. Yeah. So often we feel like we're just dragging ourselves around through it. Eh? And it's, um, it's quite a sad way to be living that kind of quiet desperation rather than feeling the joy and the exuberance of life. Yeah, totally. And that, that, you know, that's one of the things I want to bless people with is that like you actually are the creator of your reality of your life. And how do you step into that powerful place? Because that's really what you are, this powerful being. Yeah. And the spirit guides are, help, are here to help you to step into to that. I don't know if you want to hear this story. You know, have you, got, have you ever watched the movie like Scrooge? Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, I was watching it one time after my spirit guides had, I had gotten this relationship with my spirit guides. And all of a sudden I saw it in a whole different light. I was looking at it and I went, wow, he had three spirit guides come to him in one night and they totally transformed him. And I realized like, yeah, this is, you know, what your spirit guides are here to help you is help you transform. He had a life of misery. And in a meeting with three spirit guides, he went from a life of misery to a life of fulfillment and happiness and purpose. He started, you know, he helped Tiny Tim. I know it's a made up story, but it actually represents the truth of why your spirit guides are here. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and that's something, uh, there probably aren't many people out there who haven't seen that movie. <laughs> so if you can... It's always on around Christmas time. Next time it's on, you, we can do that too. Look at it in a, a new light, not just Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I, yeah, I'm always looking at everything in life. Like, you know, your spirit is speaking to you and your guides are speaking to you. And so even a movie can speak to you in a way. Yeah. And that's such a great way to just have deeper meaning in our lives and to go from that state of there's got to be more to life than this than to really feeling like we're connected and part of something bigger than ourselves. And everywhere we go, we're getting little signs and messages. If only we're open to seeing them or hearing them or it's however they're coming to us, there are messages coming to us all the time. Oh, I mean, sometimes they come through people. You know, I have a, a my, my best friend, you know, I always go, oh, Divine Mother speaking to her because she'll like say something to me sometimes that is totally not her at all, but she'll say it to me. And I'll just go, okay, that is, you know, spirit, Divine Mother speaking to, to me through her, you know, that I'm supposed to be going down this path and doing this particular thing. Um, and so it's, it's, yeah, it's how do you start to, you know, bring that awareness because, you know, life isn't meant to be drudgery and you have to start to really bring in the true spiritual truths that are happening all around you, not the, you know, the dull drum of like doing the chores and you know. yeah, or the superficial level. There's so much meaning behind events that we can, we can penetrate into. And, uh, and that brings so much more to our lives, so much more meaning and depth. Yeah, completely. I totally agree. Yeah. So can you tell us how we can start connecting with our spirit guides so that we can begin to benefit from what they have to offer. Yeah. I mean, the first step is really about letting go of that belief. I'll believe it when I see it. Okay. And just start to acknowledge that they are here right now. And I tell people in um, one of my classes that to, you know, put your hands on your heart and just really say, I'm open and willing to receive the guidance, the blessings, you know, from my spirit guides and to be aware that they are here because that gives the, you know, door a little crack and, and you know, and ask for the spirit guides to actually, you know, communicate to you in a way that you can start to understand because they are communicating and typically they come in a way that you're naturally wired 
So like I'm an empath, some people are empath, some people are highly sensitive, some people are not. And so they're gonna, you know, but like they usually try to communicate in a way that you're more naturally wired. In order for you to accept that, you have to love yourself, you know, because most people are usually disliking things about themselves. And so they're not in the energy of self-love, they're in the energy of, you know, self-hate or dislike. And, you know, the, the so your spirit guides are coming to you in a way that they feel like, oh, you're wired. And so you have to be receptive to it and acknowledge it. And go, oh, I think that's spirit. If you don't want to call it a specific guide because you don't know yet, you can just say, oh, spirit's speaking through me. It, it could, you know, it's probably a specific guide, but it doesn't matter. It's just a matter of acknowledging it's the spiritual plane. And then presumably you you get some guidance and then acting on it will give you more trust and and faith in what you're feeling or sensing or you know, the information that you're getting and allowing yeah, exactly. you to move forward with it with more confidence. Yes. In fact, I tell people acting on the guidance you're getting is so important because if you're getting um, guidance from your spirit guides and you don't act on it, they stop giving you guidance, not because they're trying to punish you. It's because they go, oh, you're not interested. You know, there's always personal choice here. We yeah. get to choose, you know, and so, you know, it's like we get to choose whether we're coming from our ego or we're going to come from, you know, our higher self. It's our choice. And so if the spirit guides see that you're not ready to like receive it, they just kind of sit back. They're, they didn't leave you. They're just not trying to impose themselves on you. And so I tell people like, you have to get receptive and willing and then act on it. Yeah. So if someone doesn't know what their purpose is, or they're feeling that sense of, oh, there's got to be more to life than this. What do they need to do to be able to get clear on their purpose? Well, usually what I find for people when they're not clear on the purpose, it's, there's just, I tell people we're, we're either expanding or contracting. There is no standing still. So what I mean by that is that we're hardwired. There's a spiritual law called the law of more life. And so every human being is hardwired for growth. We're supposed to be growing. You know, think about it. A baby comes into the planet. They've got to grow, you know, and they grow. Um, but that's on the physical plane. But we're meant to grow, you know, in our consciousness, in the energy that we put out into the world. And so... You either expanding or contracting, there is no standing still. And one of my um, complimentary talks I do called Awaken to Your Spiritual Gifts, I have a little quiz that I do where I go through these four questions that show you whether you're expansive or contractive. There's four that can show you whether you're on the contractive side and four that show you whether you're on the expansive side. What most people are is they're usually a mix, but sometimes I meet people who are all on the contractive side. Now, that's not a bad thing because... What you have to do is start to honor where you are right now. See, what most people want to do is they want to circumvent where they are because they aren't happy with where they are. So they want to push that away and be, try to pretend they're someplace where they're not. So in order to like, get clear on what your purpose is, you have to first know where you are spiritually, emotionally, mentally, and physically. And then that would t then determine what the next step is. See, because- so It's about knowing your starting place. Right. Because how can you give like, you know, give directions when you don't know where the person is, right? So yeah. so that's how it works with um people in that you have to start to honor yourself. That's why I talk about the importance of like self-love. You won't know where you are if you're always disliking or hating something about yourself. Cause then you're trying to push that away instead mm -hmm. of going, you know what? I'm a person that I need a lot of support, you know, or or I'm a person that I need some alone time or I'm a person, you know, whatever that is, because it's different for everybody. Um, you know, you have to start to honor that. And then we can help you with the next step to get to the expansive side of the equation if you happen to be on the contractive side. But I tell people there's no judgment. You know, if you're contractive, it's not a bad thing. People are always ebb and flow. It's just if you're contractive all the time or like 90% of the time, you're never going to awaken to your purpose at that point. We have to help you move to the expansive side to awaken to that purpose. So I tell people, because people come to me a lot of times in my uh, Sacred Portal Spiritual Success Coaching, they go, well, can I ask the, the, you know, this, the portal what my purpose is? I said, well, you can. I said, but I'll be honest, if you ask and we haven't gotten you to shift to that expansive side, you'll just doubt it and won't believe it. 
I've seen it. It's what happens. When when you work with me, what I want to help you do is you're going to discover it and the guides are going to help you discover it by here's do this, do that. And then you're going to go, ah, okay. Because, and then you're going to start to believe it because it's not somebody else telling you, it's you going, ah, I sense this in my you know inner self. So, yeah. and that, that just relates to any kind of growth that we have. It needs to be of our own experience. We need to make it our own practical wisdom through our own knowing of it, right? Like we can read all the books we want and, but until we say like sit in that chair and meditate and get some experience of it, move forward through our own knowing it's, it's just like someone telling you something. It's just water off a duckie's back. In most cases, we need to make it our own experience. Yeah, exactly. I mean, experience and repetition are the two things that help reprogram your subconscious mind. And so like all of my classes and programs I do are all about giving people experiences. You know, it's not just, here's the information, you know, um, because I know you're only going to get so much from the information. In fact, what most people do is they get the information and they go, that was a great class. And they go away and put it on the shelf and never ever do a thing with it. <laughs> <laughs> then they contract. <laughs> exactly. Because they need experience. You know, yeah. it's why most people need a coach or someone to work with because we can't see our own selves. Yeah. We, we, you know, we, people get stuck in a place and they need help with someone who, who, who's, you know, they resonate with that can help them to like move into the next step they're supposed to move into. Yeah. Yeah. So I believe you have something to offer our listeners. Would you like to tell us what that is as well as where people can find you online and and learn more about what you do? Sure. I have a gift where I call the complimentary next step connection call. Um, It's a gift I like to give to people for anyone who's, you know, if you're in a place you're wanting to discover your purpose or you know you've had some challenges getting to the next step and you're ready to get some support, um, I'd be happy to talk with you and, you know, coach you a little bit in the section and see if, you know, if we're a fit and something that would help you. Um, It's You can go to deepaloo.com forward slash gift. Um, And then deepaloo.com is where you can go see some of my artwork and I sell G. Clay's of all my portals on G. Clay's, their high-end museum art reproductions so you know that you can actually get something and i pray and bless them to carry the energy of the original um so yeah you can go to deeply.com to check that out great and i will put links to all of that stuff in the show notes well deepa it has been such a pleasure talking with you today thank you so much for joining me and sharing all this really interesting light and information with us i really appreciate it Oh, thank you so much. It's such a pleasure. It's always a blessing to get to go and, you know, share this with some like-minded people that are, you know, looking to help the world and the people in it. Yeah. And this is such an interesting topic. I know people are really going to enjoy this. So thanks so much. Thank you. So there it is, my friend. I hope you've enjoyed my conversation with Deepa Liu. So once again, you can find Deepa online at deepaliu.com. That's D-E-E-P-A-L-I-U.com. And I'll put the links to her site and her freebie in the show notes. And if you're up for some more inspiration and are ready to sort yourself out, don't forget to check out my Better Than Happy Zone membership, which is chock full of trainings, techniques, and practices to take your well-being to the next level. And you can sign up now for one little dollar. There's so much to gain and nothing to lose. So have a look at betterthanhappyzone.com. Okay, thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. Take care and I will see you next week. Bye for now. Thanks so much for listening and for sharing this podcast and for subscribing and leaving me a lovely five-star review on iTunes. Those things really help to get the podcast out there so that it can serve more people. If you have any questions or would like me to address a certain topic, I'd love to hear from you. You can email me at info at Thanks again, and I'll see you next week.